We would love to cover in today's video the Patrick Kane trade to the Rangers appears to be getting really close. Could be happening any time now. Plus, we also have some updates on teams like Ottawa and Toronto apparently eyeing some of the same potential defensemen. The Predators are wide open for business. A few more players are being held out for uh, precautionary reasons like JBR, for example. We have the latest updates on him. Plus, Casper Capitan was claimed on waivers. We have more players on waivers today and some injury updates as well. So a lot coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As you can see, I'm currently on the road uh, for today's, but we have a lot of news to cover. We had three trades earlier. There is a video up on the channel to discuss those. We've seen the Rangers trade Vitaly Kravtsov to the Canucks. You know, Nita Ryder was traded to the Winnipeg Jets and the uh, Bruins and Avalanche swap players with Keith Kincaid going to Colorado and Shane Bowers going to Boston. Now, we have the latest on everything else on the waiver wire today. Casper a captain in Pittsburgh was available and he was picked up by the St. Louis Blues. I was kind of surprised a lot of people. Pittsburgh and St. Louis actually played today. Kapanen was not in the lineup for the Blues, but he was uh, claimed by them. And even though he has an extra year on his contract, uh, that's certainly not something that many of us were uh, expecting, especially, you know, instead of the way he's played the contract and everything. But it uh, has happened. The St. Louis Blues have... In my opinion, done the Penguins a big favor by taking that contract off their hands. Uh, Kevin Gravel uh, was on waivers as well. He cleared uh, new on waivers today. Includes Jake Lashishan, uh from the New York Rangers. Then we talked yesterday that we're probably going to see some Ranger moves today to clear some camp space. I expect a Lashishan to be on waivers. Possibly Kravstoff if he wasn't traded or a trade I thought was pretty likely to take place today as well. Both have indeed taken that route, Lachishan on waivers. We also have Jordy Ben of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's also available on waivers. Plus, we have Vinny Lettieri as well of the Bruins, also available on the waiver wire. We'll find out at 2 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow if there are any claims or if these players can all be reassigned to their American Hockey League affiliates. Now, uh, as I mentioned, we have a variety of other injury and recall updates and roster moves. I know in Ottawa, the uh, recalled Mark Castellet sent down Ridley Gregg back down to the minors looking for a different look up front. Uh, they're doing battle with the Montreal Canadiens this evening. Uh, we also had an injury today in New York, which I wonder if it will complicate things at all with the Patrick Kane trade, but Ryan Lindgren was injured for the Rangers, and there is some talk uh, wondering if he is going to be out longer term and will need LTIR or if it's just going to be a shorter term situation. If he does go in LTIR, uh, that will expedite the Patrick Kane tree. There is no doubt about that. The Pittsburgh Penguins were able to activate defenseman Yan Ruda today. Uh, of course, that was thankfully uh, due to the Kapanen claim in St. Louis after losing him from the roster. They had the space necessary to activate him. Uh, the Canucks announced today as well that Curtis Lazar is hurt and was placed on injured reserve. The Boston Bruins also activated for Thomas Nosek today as well, so he should be back here anytime. And another interesting news tidbit as well, uh, there was a trade about uh, a year ago between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Arizona Coyotes. It was in the line, last year near the deadline when the Leafs traded Nick Ritchie to the Coyotes in exchange for Ilya Labushkin. Uh, that deal, there was actually a draft pick involved uh, from the Leafs going to the Coyotes that the Coyotes had to choose from. They were either had the option of getting a third round pick in 2023 or a second round pick in 2025. Uh, the deadline for them to make their decision uh, was yesterday, and they did decide to go the 2025 second rounder. So clearly that kind of will help the Leafs in a sense. Uh, it gives one more pick back in their arsenal here of the uh, draft currency that they might use when making deals ahead of this year's deadline. Those uh, 2023 picks are quite valuable, although the Leafs are getting low in draft picks. That's uh, one that was already spoken for, but essentially uh, putting one to the future does help them a little bit, at least for today. Now, as I mentioned out of the trade room section of the video, Patrick Kane uh, getting closer and closer to becoming a New York Ranger. Multiple things happened today to really move things along. Like I said earlier, for starters, Vitaly Krasov traded to Vancouver, creating a roster spot and more cap space availability. Uh, they also received, uh, you know, Will Lockwood in return for that deal, but he's already in the minor, so nothing impacts their NHL roster. They also had Jake Lashishan on waivers, so he can be demoted or if he is claimed off the roster as of tomorrow. 
Uh, and then as I mentioned as well, the Ryan Lindgren injury kind of complicates things, but if he goes on LTIR, it even expedites things further. This trade is expected to be a three-team deal with another team retaining to that an additional 25% on Patrick Kane after Chicago retains 50% on their side. And Chicago also uh, kind of expedited things here and kind of moved things along, which basically for us, I think for the most part, confirms 100% that he's waived to go to the Rangers, uh, saying that he is being held up tonight's game in San Jose for trade-related reasons. So now the other uh, player in Chicago, which is not related to this trade, that's been held out today is also Sam Lafferty, who's getting a lot of interest from around the league. Hard to say where he ends up, but uh, lots of interest. He's definitely going to be moved, um, and they're protecting their assets in that regard here as well. But Kane is getting closer and closer to being a Ranger. He left the team, uh, flew home to Chicago, um, certainly awaiting things to be finalized. I think we've seen the last uh, Patrick Kane in the Chicago Blackhawks uniform. I would expect, from what we know so far, the most likely return is going to be probably Zach Jones as a prospect. There's probably going to be a draft pick in there. I would suspect it's going to be a higher pick. I don't know if it's going to be a first rounder. It might be a second rounder. And there, there could be an additional maybe B prospect or something in there as well. Of course, like I said, there's going to be a third team involved, which uh, there was some speculating that it could be Montreal because they were apparently interested in uh, doing the retention on Ryan O'Reilly. They didn't end up doing that, so they could be, but there's other teams that have the ability to do this as well, and um, certainly are in the mix. They'll likely end up getting another, you know, fourth, fifth round pick, something to that effect for their efforts, but certainly, like I said, Kane to the Rangers getting closer and closer. Very well could happen um, as early as Tuesday unless Ryan Lingering goes on LTIR, which it could happen even sooner, so stay tuned. The end of the Patrick Kane year in Chicago appears to be, uh, at least on ice has already happened. Off ice will be happening shortly. He should be in the Rangers organization over the next few days. Now on to a few other trade talk from around the league. JVR, of course, of Philly is being held out tonight. They're not calling it trade-related reasons, but it basically is. They said he was dealing with something minor, just some, like a good time to give him a maintenance day, uh, which is basically saying he's going to be dealt. Jeff Merrick and Elliot Friedman talked about one of the 32 thoughts segment on Hockey Night in Canada tonight, indicating that he's uh, definitely going to be moved. One team that was in the mix for him, though, was Winnipeg, and they acquired Dino Niederreiter earlier today. doesn't mean 100% that they will be out of the running on um, on JVR, but a farewell could have an impact for sure. Uh, I suspect Winnipeg might do another move or two, but they may go in a different direction. There was a few other teams, though, that were already expressing interest in him as well, so we'll have to wait and see. Where things go, they did make mentions on updates of Timo Meyer in that segment as well. Saying New Jersey still appears to be the front runner. Uh, Carolina is in the mix, but Ellie Freeman thought maybe they might not really be. Uh, I guess not that not that they're not in it, but just not he's not sure they're going to be able to get it done. Uh, and there are a few other teams he thinks Vegas is in there as well, but it sounds like the Devils are still a front runner. Now there was talk and speculation that the Sharks were pushing to get Dawson Mercer as part of the return going back to them from New Jersey. But right now, you would think, I've seen a few reporters make a couple of good points, on if that were the case and something that the Devils were seriously considering doing, you would think they might be holding him out for trade-related reasons. And that has not happened. He continues to play. He's been red hot playing on their top line. He's playing tonight and scored again. So I would suspect that the Devils are not going to do that deal in uh, move Mercer. As much as they want Meyer, Mercer's a big part of their team too. So I'd not sure that they're going to be that further along. It's seeming less likely as well that the uh, team that acquires Meyer will be able to get a contract extension in place before the trade. It sounds like they may have to uh, take the chance without it and start talking to him after the fact. Um, at one point, it was believed that Sharks were going to let teams talk to him, and um, if they were able to get a contract done, it might even boost the value. But that doesn't sound like that's likely any longer. So we'll have to see where things go. Also, it looks like uh, Ottawa and Toronto are both shopping for help on the defense. And that they might be talking to some of the same teams, including Luke Shed in Vancouver. I know on the first intermission tonight in the Hockey Night, they talked about um, concern over some of these players and how long they've been sitting out. I know Luke Shed's one of those guys who've been out for a little bit now. And, you know, it's hard on, on them both personally and professionally when they're sitting around waiting for things to happen. Like, look at Chikrin and Gavrikov. They've been out for a long time as well. Uh, you know, it's stressful, not knowing what's going to happen next and when when the trade's going to happen, where you're going to go, and whatnot. And some of the teams that have been rumored to be in on Shen still haven't 
pull the trigger, but it sounds like, based on what they were saying, that we know the Leafs and the Senators both looking for help on the blue line, and they both seem to have interest here. Of course, Luke Shen was originally drafted by the Leafs. Um, it may make more sense for them to look at Shen than Ottawa, given the fact that he is a rental, whereas Ottawa is looking for somebody more likely to play on a longer-term basis if they can find that a great contract. There's some talk as well that the Sens might uh, look to move goalie Cam Talbot. Apparently, contract and extension talks haven't gone to greatest. There were some reports saying that Talbot uh, turned down the offer to uh, to extend. Um, hard to say. Goalie trades at the deadline are a little more finicky and not always something you see. Usually, it's more for depth. You don't usually see goaltenders that have ability to be in starting. Guys uh, move a whole lot. Uh, usually, it's, it's not... Real common, but teams like the Kings and Vegas, for example, are rumored to be you know looking for goaltending help ahead of the deadline near doing dealing with the some you know injuries and whatnot or inconsistent play, and uh, he might have some interest. So obviously, if it's not looking like they're going to be able to retain him for next season and beyond, might make sense to move him. But at the same time, uh, you know they're trying to make a push here for the playoffs and uh, they need goaltending, right? So with Forsberg likely done for the season, I'm not sure how they. Go about doing this. If they did move him, I would think they would need another goalie in return. So that's certainly a complicated scenario. Uh, but I think they might be, in some respects, you know, watching Gustafson play as well as he is in Minnesota, might be having some regret on doing that trade. As much as they like Talbot, I think they'd rather have the younger Gustafson back in their lineup playing like he is in Minnesota. Unfortunately, he never showed that level of consistency during his time in Ottawa, which has well led to the trade, of course, in the first place. But it will be an interesting scenario to kind of keep an eye on. Um, you know, trade talks could progress, but at the same time, extension talks could reignite. You never know. We don't know. Was it turned down because he doesn't think he wants to stay beyond this year, or is it more about that he just wasn't happy with the money they offered? We don't really know more details than that. We'll have to wait and see where things go on that front. Also, reports tonight from the 32 Thoughts over from Freeman and Merritt to the National Predators are wide open for business. We were seen today. They traded with your Needham Needham runner to the Winnipeg Jets, and that's just the beginning. They expect many other trades to take place, depending on what level of interest there is in a variety of their players. Uh, Jeff Barrett talked tonight. There's really only three untouchable players on that roster, including captain and defenseman New Rowan Yossi, goalie UC Saros, and newly signed to a long-term deal as of this past uh, offseason, Philip Forsberg. So, of course, uh, he signed a long-term deal. Now, other than those guys, everybody's to some degree available. Um, they mentioned Dante Fabro as being a player that is the most likely to be traded. Uh, he's a defenseman that they'd like to get a first start for. They mentioned the San Jose Sharks possibly being a good landing spot for him. His former college coach is uh, David Quinn. So, of course, they, they have a you know, familiarity there. Uh, and he obviously had a lot of success in college, which is why many thought he would come to the NHL with more fanfare and be a higher-level player. But he has struggled with consistency. Um, lots of other guys on our roster could be Getting interest, but it's hard to say. Like, for example, Ryan Johansson's hurt, likely done for the year, so he's likely not moving. I'm not sure that anybody would want Matt Duchesne. I mean, uh, you know, he's a good player, but again, a lot of term, a lot of money, which complicates things. Uh, hard to say who else on that roster could be. I know there were some rumblings about Matias Eckholm before, but again, um, we'll have to see where things go. But it sounds like David Poyle is definitely fully committed to being a seller at this point, and kind of acknowledging that this is not the year for the Nashville Predators and they need to retool here and then go with a different mix here moving forward. So that is all the latest for now. And you expect there to be more trades likely in the next day or two. There's bound to be a lot of activity here leading up to the deadline. Uh, of course, which is coming up on March the 3rd. Uh, so certainly stay tuned. Top Shelf Hockey. I'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, analysis on all the trades leading to the NHL trade deadline 2023. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.